All right, so in this video, we're going to have a look at proving that the square root of 2 is irrational. Now, in the Extension 2 Maths course, there is a topic called Extension 1, or how to Extension 1's uh, topics. Now, this is a, a pretty general topic in itself. It's not really well defined in terms of there's no set outline. So they can kind of throw you some curveballs here. They can give you things that you probably wouldn't expect to see in an exam. And a lot of the things that you do see, especially towards the end of an Extension 2 exam, are usually from Harder Extension 1. And when we say Harder Extension 1, well, what they really mean is really something taken from first year calculus courses. All right, so anyway, proving that root 2 is irrational. Now, this is quite a nice proof. It's a proof by contradiction. Now, most people aren't taught what, proof, what, what a proof by contradiction is in school, simply because either the teacher themselves just doesn't think to do it, maybe they don't even know about it, or there's just not enough time to do it during the year. So, a proof by contradiction. What does that mean? Proof by contradiction. Well, let's have a look at the name. A contradiction. So, we're going to assume something. We're going to assume the opposite of what we want to prove. Then we're going to do some steps and get to a point where something doesn't make sense. Now, if our steps have have been mathematically correct and logically correct, and then we get to something that doesn't make sense, well, the only way that that could not make sense is if our original assumption was false. So, I'm going to assume that root 2 is rational. So, I've assumed the opposite of what I want to prove. I want to prove it's irrational, so I'm going to prove that it is rational. Now, also something that's not really taught, what does it mean for something to be rational? So, if something is rational, that means I can write it as P divided by Q, where P and Q are integers, but not just integers, they need to be integers in lowest common form, or they have no common divisors, no common factors. So P and Q are integers with no common factors. And why do we say no common factors? Well, let's take something like, I'm not sure, maybe 5. Well, what's 5? We can write 5 as 10 divided by 2, we can write it as 20 divided by 4, but the way that we express it is 5 divided by 1. Because it's the lowest, there are no common factors in this expression, where here I can simplify to get to this point. Anyway, this, this, this uh, statement with the no common factors is going to be very important in this proof. So I've assumed that root 2 is rational, therefore root 2 equals p on q, where p and q are integers, and there are no common factors. Okay, so let's square both sides of this statement. p divided by q, or squared. Alright, well, root 2 squared, okay, that's easy, that's 2. Here I have p squared divided by q squared. Now I'm going to multiply by q squared, so I'll get 2q squared equals p squared. Now, again, this statement here is really everything that we need to prove that root 2 is irrational. We know that p and q are integers, so if q is an integer, then q squared is an integer. So I'm going to say if q is an integer, and this is the mathematical way that we write it, if q is an element from the set of integers, so this is the set notation for integers, and I'm saying if q is an element of the integer set, that is if q is an integer, well then q squared is certainly an integer. You take any two integers, you multiply them together, you're going to get an integer. So if q squared is an integer, what does that mean? That means that p squared is equal to 2 times an integer. So therefore, p squared equals 2 multiplied by an integer. Okay, now this I guess is pretty informal, but not to worry. So p squared is 2 times an integer. So what does that mean about p squared? What can we say about p squared? Well, if I have an integer and I multiply it by 2, I'm guaranteed to get an even number. So that means I can say that p squared is even, right? 
You take an odd number, you multiply it by 2, you're going to get an even number. You take an even number, multiply it by 2, you're going to still get an even number. So therefore, I can guarantee that p squared is even. Now, if p squared is even, what does that mean? That means that p itself is even. Why is that? Well, if, if I was going to make the claim that p is odd, well, let's think about it. If p is odd, p squared is p times p, so it's an odd number multiplied by an odd number, and we know that an odd number multiplied by an odd number is also itself odd. So the only way that p squared can be even is if p is even. So, if p is even, that means I can write it in a certain way. I can say that p is equal to 2 times an integer, which is, let's say, m, where m is an integer. Okay, so p equals 2 times m. This here guarantees that p is even. So I'm going to substitute this back into here. So therefore, 2q squared equals 2m all squared, and I'm going to say that q, well we know that that's an integer because we've said so up here, and m is an integer. So q and m are both integers. All right, the next bit, squaring this, 2q squared equals 4m squared, and now I'm going to divide by 2, and I'll get q squared equals 4 divided by 2, that's 2, 2m squared. And now I recover this thing, which is q squared equals 2m squared. But let's think for a moment. This looks remarkably similar to something that we've just seen. We just said that p squared was equal to 2q squared. q and p were integers, and here I have q squared equals 2m squared. Q and M are integers. So I have something squared, some integer squared, equals 2 times another integer squared, which is like here. An integer squared is equal to 2 times another integer squared. And what did my logic tell me? It told me that P squared... It, uh, it told me that P is even. So here, I'm, I can say similarly, by the same logic as above here, I can have that Q is even. So, by the same logic as above, I have that Q is even. So if Q is even, what can I say about Q? Therefore Q is equal to 2 times n, where n is an integer. This will always ensure that Q is even. So I have two bits of information here. I have that P is even which means I can write it as 2 times an integer, and I have q is even, which means I can write it as 2 times a different integer. But what is this? This is a contradiction. Why is it a contradiction? It's a contradiction because we said here, if root 2 was rational, if it was rational, then there are going to be, it's going to be written as p on q, but p and q have no common factors. But here, we can clearly see that both p and q have a factor of 2. It's 2 times an integer and 2 times an integer. So, therefore, p and q are both even, which means they have a factor, both have 2 as a factor. So this contradicts our statement, our assumption rather, this contradicts Contradicts. That's a T. Uh, let's rewrite that. Contradicts. There we go. This contradicts our statement, our assumption, our assumption, not statement. This contradicts our assumption. And so therefore, I can say that the opposite of my assumption must be true. And so therefore, root 2 is irrational. And I've finished my proof.